placemat is an opportunity for kids to take a question or a series of questions and first of all with the rest of the group gathered around create their own ideas on paper and have a chance to kind of organize their thoughts um, track their own responses to the question then to share it with everybody and it either changes their answer or their response or it confirms their response but it gives them an idea of kind of collective thought in relation to the question. I just find it's it helpful, helpful for me it's because helpful. I can write my stuff down and then if I don't like if I don't have an idea then I can just ask Abby or Noah or anybody on my table group. I like the fact that it gives them the opportunity to kind of shine on their own, have their own thoughts, have their own reflections, their own responses, but then to also create a group think so that they're all part of the group idea. Um, it lets us interact with each other and share ideas. Because a lot of people in our class like to work on their own and like just separate themselves, so it really helps us communicate. Um, the groups are designed according to kind of their personalities and what their strengths are and, and some areas of need. So first of all, the group structure has to be done. I've already done that and they're already sitting in tables. Sitting together in a group is important. Having a space where they can work, where um, everybody can get close to the placemat itself is important. And then having enough of an idea of kind of what kind of question will they understand and be able to come up with responses. If I make the question too difficult, then they can't get started because they don't understand what they're supposed to do. Once we kind of tie that in, they know what they're supposed to be doing, making sure I give them enough time, but not too much time to put down their ideas. I kind of find it helpful that you have like a, a small space so then um, you can put all your really good ideas on it. And then you have another like, one. Like keep your other ideas in the back of your mind. Um, I need them to understand that whatever they write down is okay because some kids will struggle with even answering that question and to recognize that that could happen and for them to have permission to struggle. If, if they don't have the foggiest idea, then that's okay, knowing that eventually the group's going to help them. They're going to hear more ideas and then that will hopefully give them new ideas of their own. More bathrooms and more bigger bathrooms uh, and a playground. Okay. Bigger change rooms. What okay. else do you have? I have more languages taught here, more more classes composting, recycling, etc. And more outdoor equipment because yeah, yeah. that's boring. Uh, more cops, more hospitals, and like more senior helpers, like help like help elderly homes. homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. sense. Uh, I can see who's really done their homework, who's really done some thinking. Um, I can see kind of as I go around to the groups by the amount of writing that they've done, who's really got some good ideas. I can also kind of scan through their ideas and and go, hmm, got to be careful about that one. It might be a little controversial. Maybe we need to. I need to guide their their conversation away. It also gives me an opportunity to look at um, the people that really don't have any idea, don't know where to start, and maybe I need to give them some ideas and, and kind of help them out. If the group ideas don't help and they still aren't sure where to start, then I can step in. I know which ones will be a little more independent and which ones I can kind of help from there. Well, seeing yeah. other people's ideas, I guess, can influence yeah. your thoughts. Yeah. Sometimes I like to write a lot, so that it changes my thinking about what I'm going to do. So I'll write down every idea that comes to my mind, but not all of them are the best. So it teaches me to sort of choose my rule out the ones that I don't like as much. Um, find where your strong leaders are, people who might be able to get the conversation going if the conversation starts to fail a little bit. Somebody will, who will have ideas that, that if things quiet down and they don't know where to go, there'll be somebody who can step in um, and get them going again. It doesn't have to be the teacher. Uh, give it a try. Let, give the kids the ownership. Let the responses be theirs, regardless of what they, they say or don't say. And then give the power back to the group so that the group can help answer the, the initial question.